All right, we're back in the woods. It's Ranger Russ again from the Meg's Point Nature Center. I'm really excited today because the animal that we're going to be talking about is one of my favorites. Before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody that the Meg's Point Nature Center is located at Hammond Acid Beach State Park. So stop by as soon as we open again. Unfortunately, we're you know, closed right now because of the social distancing. Uh, I really want to remind people to remember all of those rules about social distancing. Keep out of large groups. Keep the distance. I'm noticing a lot of people yesterday, the park was really crowded with people, which is great to see. But there were getting to be large groups of people starting to talk and you need to keep those spaces. Make sure you wash your hands regularly um, and keep those, those quarantines going. So, because everybody watching right now, you're all quarantined in your houses, you're following the rules, you're not visiting the Nature Center. Um, the Nature Center is run by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, and they run all of the parks, so you should give a shout out to, to your uh, you know, local state parks. Get out there, do some hiking. It's a little rainy today, so I'm not thinking a lot of people are going to be hiking. But this is also the first day of spring. I, spring you, you know, moves around, so sometimes it's on the 20th, sometimes it's the 21st, and very occasionally, I think it's only on leap years, it falls on the 19th. So, happy spring everyone, and let's get to talking about our animal that we're going to talk about. I'm so excited because this is a cool animal. We're going to be talking about an amphibian, and we've already done some reptiles, so you guys know what a reptile is. Everybody, I'm sure, has an idea what an amphibian is, what, but what makes amphibians different from other animals. One of the major things, amphibians can metamorph. They can change from one thing into another. So kind of like a transformer turns from a car to a robot, these animals turn from tadpoles into frogs or salamanders. So the, the amphibians that we have are frogs and salamanders. We also have toads and newts, which are just subgroups of frogs and salamanders. So toads are frogs. They're a little different. And newts are salamanders, but they're also a little bit different. Um, the other big thing about amphibians, which is the same as reptiles, is they're ectothermic. So hopefully everybody remembers what ectothermic means. They rely on their outside heat for their, uh, their internal body temperature and it's gonna change with the temperature in the air. We keep our woods room quite a bit warmer than the rest of the building because the amphibians and reptiles like that warmth. It makes them more active and it makes it more likely that they're gonna eat because the warmer it is, the more they eat and we like our amphibians and reptiles to eat. So, let's look at our amphibian today. He's right behind me and it's hiding in this tank. There we go. We'll give it a little bath. Now I want everybody to know I washed my hands really well, rinse them especially well because amphibians can absorb things right through their skin. They have very absorbent skin. We have a wood frog today and I'm going to see if I can hold it like there we go. So you can all see the wood frog. Wood frogs have very bright colors sometimes. This particular one is a girl, which means it's going to be a little bit brighter than the boys. Okay. They have great camouflage. They blend in with the leaves because wood frogs live in the woods. This is not a pond frog. They do go to ponds in the springtime to lay their eggs. They're actually the first frog in Connecticut to lay their eggs. They'll go down, they, as soon as it starts to get warm, they hop down and lay their eggs in usually vernal pools, which will dry up in the summertime. So they have to get their eggs in there before the pool dries up. Now, these frogs, it can take different amounts of time for them, for their eggs to hatch. They'll lay 30,000 or 3,000 eggs, not 30,000, 3,000 eggs. And the ones that are laid earlier in the spring, it could take 90 days for them to hatch. The ones that are laid late 
in the spring or early summer, they could only hatch out in nine days because they can't stay if that vernal pool is going to dry up. They've got to be able to get out of the vernal pool. Okay. Now, easy identifier for the wood frog is that mask uh, and the reddish brown color. Again, females more red than brown and the males are usually uh, more red. There's one cool thing that you can tell the difference between the male and female. The boys and the girls in the springtime, the boys get a really fat thumb. They get a really muscular thumb because they have to wrap around and hold the girls and they hook their thumbs together so that another boy can't come and take their, their girl away from them. So it's really spectacular that they're able to do that. Okay. I'm not sure how focused this is for you guys, but um, oh, she's trying, trying to get away from me. Okay. Now, I already said wood frogs live in the woods like their name. They look like a leaf. If you're out in the forest in the summertime, they're going to be hopping around the leaf litter. All right. They're going to be in with all those dried leaves and they look like a dried leaf. So it's really hard to find them. Actually, a little short story here. I was doing a program one time for Boy Scouts and we were out in the woods and I was telling them how there are frogs that live in the forest, but you can almost never find them. And one of the Boy Scouts points right between my feet and he says, is that one? And I looked down and I was standing over a wood frog. It was blended in. I didn't even see it. Thank goodness for young eyes because they saw that wood frog sitting right there between my feet. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. All right, now, these frogs are living in the woods. It starts to get cold. What do frogs do? They hibernate. Most frogs can freeze, okay? The wood frog freezes more than most frogs, though. They don't bury themselves. They're just in the leaf litter, sitting on the surface. They're covered by a few leaves. So when it snows, they're going to be surrounded by leaves, all right? It's not, there's no insulation there. They will freeze up and look like a little cube of frog. If you find it like an ice cube frog, you would find these in the woods. They're all curled up in a little ball. They freeze completely and spend all winter frozen. Now that's a big advantage for a frog because in the springtime, when they start to thaw out, they still have all that body fat and muscle that they had built up before they hibernated. Where if a mammal goes to hibernate, they, they're burning energy all winter long. And when they wake up, they're super, super hungry. But the frogs wake up with plenty of food already. They're already nice and muscular. And then they can go and lay their eggs. All right. It's time to put this one down. And we're going to put it right in the water. So that she can stay nice and moist. Okay. It's really important, important to keep the... Uh, substrate moist when you have frogs and again I'm gonna tell everybody that these frogs don't make very good pets um, it's really hard to you know keeping them clean you can't clean the inside of their tank with any cleaners because they can absorb them right through their skin and you also can't mix species of frogs because some frogs can actually hurt other frogs and when we when we talk about we're gonna be doing lots of these programs You'll get to see some of the other frogs, uh, and we'll talk about that some more. So the wood frog only lives about five years, and they're only able to reproduce after about three years. So they've only got a couple of years where, where they can have babies. Okay, are we ready to do some questions? I have an assistant that's going to ask, tell me some of the questions that have been going by that I've missed. That, uh, that's probably a little bit smaller than the biggest they would get. So that one right there, you'd see it maybe a little larger than that. A couple of inches long. Uh, Paige and Ella want to know, do frogs attach their eggs on sticks in the water, or is that just salamanders? Paige and Ella would like to know if frogs attach the... Yes, some of them will attach... Uh, a lot of times, though, they're going to be free-floating masses. So it really depends on just where they're laying their eggs, whether they attach them or not. 
Someone's saying, how do they f- survive being frozen? That's a great question. And scientists are researching right now. Because if we freeze and thaw, the crystals that form when we freeze break our cell walls. And then when we thaw, we have damage to our internal cells. They're able to freeze and thaw without any damage. And we don't know how that's possible. Uh, and I saw a question about how they're able to survive all winter. They're not burning any energy. So all the energy that they stored up in fat in the, in the fall when they freeze is still there when they thaw. So they're just putting themselves in suspended hibernation, suspended animation for the winter. And then in the spring, they thaw out and they're ready to go. All right, do we have another question? What do they eat? So these frogs are going to eat anything that they find in the ponds. When they hop out of the ponds, they're strictly, you know, they're eating worms and insects and things like that. But in a pond, they will actually eat algae when they're tadpoles. Let's, let's do that. When they're tadpoles, they're eating algae, uh, small insects, other small animals that are in there. They will eat other frogs. So here's another advantage that the wood frog has. They lay their eggs first, their eggs hatch out, their tadpoles are ready, and then their tadpoles go and eat the eggs of other tadpoles. So when the green frog comes to lay its eggs, the wood frog is already a tadpole and it has a food source being laid right in front of it. Another thing that that the wood frog has that's unique to any other, as far as I know, it's any other amphibian and there are other animals that this is really unique they can recognize their siblings. Somehow, after they hatch out, you know, you get thousands of thousands. Each mother is laying up to 3,000 eggs. They're all in this vernal pool. So you could have 10,000 of these little tadpoles. They recognize one another and gather together, and that helps them defend them from predators and uh, protect them. They'll defend their area from another frog's offspring. So... They're able to recognize this. We're not completely sure how they're able to do it. Um, research says that they can recognize traits from the, their parents that are in their DNA. Somehow they're able to tell their own brothers and sisters, which is just fascinating to me. What are their predators? I love these questions. So again, as tadpoles, they're going to be preyed on by a few different things. Fish obviously like to eat them when they are in the water. Once they're out of the water and in the forest, raccoons and skunks are their major predators. Snakes, there are many snakes that like to eat them. And there are a few birds. The smaller owls like to eat frogs as well. What color are the eggs are kind of greenish and they have a clear milky coat on the outside. Skyler wants to know how far can a frog jump or how high? Skyler wants to know how far they jump. So this is not the the big jumpers in the frog world. You're not going to win any contests with this frog. Um, These guys are only jumping six or eight inches. Uh, I've never seen one jump more. They might be able to, like a super frog might be able to get a foot, but this is not a big, big, long jumping frog. Very good question. This is one of the few frogs in Connecticut that are not listed in one way or another. Um, But in Connecticut and actually in in the U.S., they are not listed as an endangered species. They're actually listed as a least concern. So they're a pretty good population of them. Are they poisonous? This one is not poisonous. So the question was, is it poisonous? There are frogs that are poisonous. This is not one of those that are poisonous. All right. So I want to remind everybody that we're going to be doing these programs uh, Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock in the woods room, one of the animals in here. And at 2 o'clock, we're going to be in our water room. I am going to be throwing in some special events, and I'm looking, I'm planning one for this Saturday. Um, It's going to be a really, really special event. It's not going to be here at the Nature Center. I'm going to have to go to another place, but we're looking at having a bird of prey on our program for Saturday. 
So I will let you know it's probably going to be 1 or 2 o'clock. I'm not sure if we can get right at that 2 o'clock time slot. But we'll let you know. It'll be on the Facebook page. It'll be on our website. Make sure you like our page. Follow us. You're going to get a lot of updates when the building is ready to open. I really, you, if you come down, I'm only teaching you a small part of what the Nature Center has to offer. So I really want to encourage you to come down once the building is up and running again, which it will be. We're confident of that. And you can experience these animals because experiences are what the Nature Center is about. This is a small experience. Actually seeing the animals up close is a much more interesting experience and it's a lot more exciting. Um, uh, we have to give a shout out to the Friends of Ham and Asset. They're a big sponsor and normally we would be taking in donations during this time from all our visitors and that's what feeds and cares for all of our animals. So our Friends organization is sponsoring us through this time that we're closed. They have guaranteed that there won't be any hungry animals here at the Nature Center, which is fantastic. We're all very happy to hear that. Um, so yeah. Another place you can check for more resources, and we're going to be putting up some of our vocabulary words that we've used here. So you'll see a definition of amphibian, ectothermic, things like that. Uh, that's going to be on our website. Uh, it, it'll be listed under either parent resources. It's usually teacher resources, but we've changed it to, to parent resources since all of the parents out there right now are, are teaching their kids. So again, this is Ranger Russ. I want to thank you for tuning in, and I hope you're enjoying the, these programs that we're doing for you.